introduce our next speaker, who is uh, Dr. Bengwat. Uh, with Singapore audiences, Bengwat needs no introduction, but I'll again do a small exercise in superfluity. Uh, Bengwat's work can be summarized under the notion of cultural studies, but there's much more to it than that. He bridges the gap between academic work and the role of the public intellectual. Uh, many academics tend to be trapped in their ivory towers and do not really know uh, what, as it were, happens at ground level. They don't take in the newspapers, they don't listen to pop art, they think art is the Mona Lisa and literature is Shakespeare, but they don't know anything about what CDs sell or what the latest manga comics are. So Benguart is the exception. His work stretches across communitarian ideology in Singapore politics, to urban culture, to housing, to pop culture. Uh, he is uh, the head of sociology in the National University of Singapore. He heads the cultural studies cluster at the Asian Research Institute, and he's the co-founder of the journal. If you are not already a subscriber, please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. I'm just a gumbong boy. <laughs> House got burned down in Tokyo Street. So what do I know about arts? Um, so actually, what do I know about arts? Um, I'm not going to, instead of talking about arts, I will in fact be talking about very mundane things such as watching television and watching Korean soap opera. Uh, in that, it's kind of interesting because, um, let me just read from this introduction that Prasanjit uh, himself have written, he says that, and popular the pop culture, especially in the age of commodification, reveals an uncritical attitude towards existing structure of domination. I'm talking about those people who are uncritical and unconscious about being dominated. In in the in the context of current uh, rise of capitalism in Asia, which is being celebrated all the time, I think what is interesting is that. Um, in, we are looking at clearly integration of the region uh, through economic activities and also of course competition but if you are living in Singapore all you do is keep reading about economic competition uh, rather than anything else as a way of getting you to work a lot harder for the commodities that Ping Chia was talking about. Uh, and it will probably be the Louis Vuitton bag rather than the seashell with the sutra that they will be looking to buy. But what you do with the seashell with sutra? But at the same time, I think what is interesting also is that with the, with the rise of capitalism in Asia, is that there is in fact um, increasing confidence about local productions, about the productions within the region, and also interreferencing of each other rather than looking towards uh, the nominal West, either in America or Europe, as uh, places to mimic or to learn or to you know, uh, reproduce. In fact, many Asian countries are in fact looking towards each other to figure out what to do next. And uh, this, this this referencing is actually much more complex than we, what we normally in academic world think of as comparative studies because it involves a lot more than just setting up standards for comparison but it involves uh, much more relaxed criteria such as citations, such as reference, such as uh, you know, uh, resonance, borrowing from each other and so on. So what I want to look at then is, is uh, I've been spending quite a lot of time, really, uh, watching television uh, and listening to K-pop. And, I mean, if you haven't, for 
for those of you who do not know what Gangnam Style is, <laughs> please don't raise your hand. <laughs> Go on. So we are now so in as, you know we are now getting actually pan East Asian media products uh, in different uh, across different media. And if you look at what is also for me more interesting at the political angle is the kind is the connections between pop culture fans, particularly with the facilities of the internet. So fan clubs are no longer organized locally, uh, they're always transnational, they're able to organize activities internationally uh, through the television, through, inter uh, through uh, the internet. And what is very often, pop culture music fans are fiercely loyal, not to the nation, but to their idols. Uh, and occasionally, you will in fact see pop culture fans organized against the nation, extraterritorially. I'll give you an interesting example from Singapore. Um, there was a Korean band called 2PM. I'm talking to people who don't want to listen. <laughs> As a Korean band called 2PM, the lead singer quit, or actually quit because of some scandal, because he wrote some blog that says he hates Korea, uh, which means, you know, so he was attacked immediately, and the company dropped him very quickly. And so what happens is that all a lot of the a lot of the fans across the region were came into the defense of Jay Park, the man who quit the, the the band, and they organized an international boycott of all the products of the production company JYP Entertainment across so much so that the JYP company had to start to negotiate with the fans and try to pull them up. But what is interesting about in Singapore is that a group of probably about 14 to 16 year olds, about 40 of them, applied to the Singapore police force for a permit for demonstration. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> They applied for a permit for, uh, for, for demonstration in Singapore. <laughs> We're not used to applying for permits for a demonstration. They didn't go to Hong Lim Park and do their thing. They <coughs> applied for a permit. So this is like interesting politicization of you, which hasn't yet been covered by the government. I mean, have caught on. Now, nice, what is interesting, the police then told them that <coughs> You are not holding a political demonstration, therefore you do not need a permit. <laughs> they don't understand the politics of pop culture. So, they didn't need a permit, but nevertheless, yes, they, so it, it, very, it completely breaks the rule of all vandalism laws in Singapore and demonstration laws. They actually then started from the forum, the beginning of uh, Orchard Road, carrying placards, all right? Placards are not allowed in Singapore, but they actually carry placards, videotape themselves marching down Orchard Road from the top of it to Nian City. And then uh, yeah, Nian City started to sing their songs. <laughs> and all this was videotaped, uploaded into the international collaboration of protest against JYP. Right? I mean, so you can see that in fact, uh, and in Thailand, they actually organized a flash mob of more than 100 people in Times Square, uh, singing and dancing. J uh, 2 p.m. songs. So there's actually an integration of a whole, there's an integration of actually uh, fans across the region. And 
and it occasionally comes up and do this kind of grassroots uh, sort of politics of culture things that are that the current government regime still doesn't know quite what it is about and quite how to deal with it. Uh, so I mean, what so what is interesting then is that under all these under these quarrelling nations of China, Japan, Korea, that is constantly quarrelling about its history and how to square the history of of the past, is this sort of you know developing networks of fans. Uh, that uh, we haven't quite got conceptually what the right word to use to describe them. Of course, give, with this, all this integration at the same time, uh, what is also happening is that seeing the kind of influence that Korea culture has, Korean pop culture has in the region, Japan has finally realized that it has a lot of pop culture capital that can be exploited because animation and manga are the two biggest uh, 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 Japanese exports in the pop culture world. And so Japan is now trying to uh, you know, increase its national pool uh, in this export. And China, of course, in spite of the fact that its uh, media industry is still in infancy, is also trying to compete both for the market and for cultural influence within the region. So at the level of the integration that I'm talking about, there's also increasingly international competition within particularly between those three big producers of pop culture uh, in the competition for influence in the region. That to me will probably something that I will watch in the 21st century for the next 10 years. Thank you very much.